Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome to another video. This is a match report of Derry City 1, Sligo Rovers nil at the Brandywell, or Ryan McBride Brandywell Stadium, I should really say. Um, just bear with me with the camera, guys. Uh, just trying to sort out that issue. Should be sorted out soon, so uh, apologies for that. Um, massive, massive win for Derry City in the league tonight. Clearly, they go a point behind Shamrock Rovers in the league. They get to put Rovers under pressure. Yes, Rovers have a game in hand. All Derry can do is win their games. Spoken how their home form hasn't been as good as their away form. Two one nil wins in a row now at home is really, really strong and really good for them. Very important that they get that home form right. Very good defensively as well. A lot of clean sheets lately, so that's huge for them as well. In this game, Derry City started off with Brian Marin goal. Right back, Ronan Boyce. Left back was Cameron McJanet. Centre backs were... Shane McElhenney and Mark Connolly. In midfield, they had Will Patchen and Dummigan, although Patrick McElhenney was deeper more often than not. Um, he played in there as well, obviously, with Graydon on the right, Duffy on the left, and McGonagall up front. It was more of a 4-2-3-1. Generally, McElhenney was deeper than, uh, than Will Patchen, to be honest. They did switch a few times. As for Sligo, they went with Luke McNicholas in goal, uh, Paddy Kirk at left back, Lewis Banks at right back. Henneker played centre back alongside Shane Blaney. Three man midfield of Robbie Burton, Greg Bulger, and Adam McDonald. Bulger was generally in the centre of the tree. Will Fitzgerald on the wing, Livock on the right, and uh, that man with 15 goals, Aiden Keane up front. Now, I suppose Sligo kind of played very compact actually in the game, particularly in the first half. I thought uh, Fitzgerald and Livock in particular. Uh, weren't really wingers as such. They were very central. So, you know, at times it had five-man midfield as such. They were bunched in there. They tried to make, make it very difficult for Derry City, and they really sat back. They sat back very deep in this game, actually. So, like, your rovers, extremely deep. Um, in the first 20 minutes, though, I thought Derry City were very, very good because they moved the ball at pace, moved it very, very quickly. And um, tried to shift Sligo around. Sligo kept the shape very well. They did that very well, to be fair to them. But, um, I suppose after eight minutes, brilliant work from actually Cameron McDonald on the left-hand side. He got forward into a good position, lovely cross into the box. Graydon comes in, and to be honest, Graydon should score. It was a header, um, and he had a wide and really should have scored. He was only a couple of yards out, a uh, proper connection, and it's 1-0 Derry, and it's an early goal. But Derry did get in front after 15 minutes, and it was deserved after the start they'd had. A uh, patching free kick, typical free kick from him in 15 minutes from the edge of the box. Um, not an easy free kick. Um, hit his patching style, you know that kind of Ronaldo kick. It's a good strike, but I think McNicholas would be a bit disappointed. He got over to him and got a hand to it. Um, and it's not as if it was serious power in the shot, like either. I think he 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 feel like he should have saved it, but there he went in front. Um, at this point they were playing very high tempo football. McJanet and Boyce were playing as uh fullbacks, but they're almost playing wing back, as wingbacks, certainly at this point of the game, and they were both getting formed into good positions and causing problems. They were also allowed a lot of space, though, because I mentioned earlier that Livock and Fitzgerald were playing uh, centrally a lot of the time, so it meant that Boyce and McDonald didn't have to worry too much about them going forward, and um, you know, were afforded a lot of space in their positions to, to get forward and get... Um, Get into those positions, as I said, there. McJanet was linking up particularly well with Duffy on the left. Um, on 30 minutes, then they had a shot from 25 yards. It was actually Dummigan had this strike as well. Um, it was that long ago in the game, I'd nearly forgotten about it. Um, it opened up for him and he had a shot. Um, like Nicholas saved, you'd expect him to save it, but uh, worth a hit from him. Then at 34 minutes, there was a quick free kick from Derry in which Mar does well to get a touch, uh, from Sligo rather, and Mar does well to get a touch. That was deflected. That was the only thing they did in the first half Sligo, really, though, to be honest. It was, uh, Kirk does play, um, play a lovely ball in, but it took a deflection, and Mar has to readjust and just knock it away from, it might have been Keane coming in at the far post. So he did very well there. For the next couple of minutes and a half, there was uh, three uh, yellow cards that there was. To be fair, Burton, Blaney and McGonagall all picked up yellow cards in the 40th to the 45th minute. And all needless yellow cards. Um, they were all definite yellow cards, so you couldn't argue with the referee there, to be fair. 
And uh, right in half time, Derry had another good chance. Uh, four Derry players swarmed around Robbie Burton, forced him into the error. Duffy picks the ball up. That's the man you want to be picking up in this situation centrally. He hits a strike, saved by McNicholas, comes out, and Duffy hits a, a volley in the rebound that uh, just went over the top. So he went in at half time, Derry 1 0 up. Um, and we're a much better side and deserved it. Into the second half, Sligo started to play a little bit higher up the pitch, to be honest. Um, you know, they, they were playing with a little bit more aggression, a little bit more, a little quicker in their tempo when they had the ball. But was Derry City still creating the chances, to be fair? Uh, Duffy had a shot straight at Nicholas from 54 minutes as well. Then Duffy and McJanish were involved in a good build-up. Um, decent strike from McGonagall from the edge of the area in which went over the top as well Duffy again and um, McJanet linking up very well on that left hand side that was on 54 minutes we had a bit of a lull till the 67th minute to be fair uh, as I said Sligo at this point Sligo were trying but they weren't really getting anywhere in terms of creating chances Derry were, weren't pressing as hard as they were in the first half either so we had a bit of a lull here well, in 67 minutes, uh, lovely cross from Michael Duffy. Was headed just wide by Graydon. Another good chance for Graydon. To be fair, not as easy, let's say, as the first chance, but it was a good chance nonetheless. And all of a sudden, then you had a couple of chances from Derry in the space of a few minutes. McElhenney's left foot, long-range attempt. Just went wide at McNicholas Post on 69 minutes. On 70 minutes then, we had a couple of substitutes. Thompson came on for Patchen, Akin Tunde for McGonagall. Just before that, Morhan had come on for Bulger on 62. And Matt had come on for, Mag- for McDonald as well. But uh, uh, Akin Tunde was only on a minute and he had a great chance. Lovely play from Derry, to be fair. Sweeping move, then they could slide go open. Akin Tunde forces a good save from McNicholas. He probably feels he should have scored. He was in the box. He was about seven, eight yards out from an angle, but... Um, a little bit more composure and I think he scores, but to be fair to Mac Nicholas, he does well. Um, and then you never felt like it was strange because, you know, Derry are 1-0 up at this point. We're heading now towards the end of the game and they're comfortable. Sligo hadn't created anything, but still, you're thinking 1-0 up, Derry are 1-0 up. This game isn't over yet. Sligo could get an equaliser. You, when you don't get that second goal, you're never sure. And Sligo's best two chances came in the 89th minute and the 94th minute was four minutes of injury time. First, the 89th minute chance from Burton, uh, which Derry did very well to clear. It was actually a lovely cross from Burton, I should say. And um, Matt is in there. He's in amongst us. And Derry just did enough to get a clear. I thought for a minute Matt was going to get a header and uh, and beat Brian Maher. Um, and then the 94th minute, a lovely ball by Keane over the top. Mata is in, but it's not an easy chance. He's not one on one with the keeper, so there's a bounce on it. And uh, Michael Henney gets across Shane Michael Henney and does enough to put him off. Mata knocks it over the bar, but it was certainly a chance. And Terry nearly got caught at the end, which would have been disappointing for them. But overall, I think, um, you know, Derry City overall did deserve the point. Sligo didn't do enough. They didn't threaten enough in the game, in my opinion. Derry could have got caught, though. When you're one nil up, you just never know. But um, look, guys, I'm just going to leave it there. Let me know what you think of the comments. If you watched the game, if you're a Derry fan, Sligo fan, what did you think of the game? If you're a Derry fan, um, how confident are, are you that you might catch Shamrock Rovers? Let me know in the comments, guys. Like the video if you like the content. Subscribe if you're new and hit your bell notification. Bye.